So the power of indigenous languages for children is, is, is generally underestimated. I mean, as I sit here, I can almost remember word for word some of the stories that I, I have read as a child in my own language. I can repeat them um, without thinking. And they have fired up my imagination in ways that um, I, can, if, I cannot even begin to describe. Now, you've taken on a very big task, which in my view probably is bigger than Puku on its own. Yes. So who are you working with? Who, who is helping you um, do this very, very important task for the country? Yes, I, we are, I call Puku a baking powder organization because we are a very small organization. And I think others have the main ingredients, which is the people and the educational system. So we have partnered with UNISA, uh, and the vice chancellor has been very supportive for this year of indigenous languages because he's also the vice chairperson of the UNESCO National Commission for South Africa mm. and, and UNESCO. Uh, so the Secretary General Carlton Mkwevo has also been very supportive. Mm. So that's a partnership which we hope will help us actually go beyond and take children's literature to another level. Because I believe that uh, children's books, it's a very serious political pro uh, uh, project. Uh, when people talk about decolonization, Yes, Ngugi says yes. we must write in indigenous languages. Yes. Ngugi and, I, and I challenged Ngugi when he, he, at the uh, Cape Town Book Fair uh, to say that Ngugi, we have been following this. I've been following Ngugi since I was a, a student at the University of Zimbabwe, mm. uh, reading Devil on the Cross and... Uh, I marry know, when I want, when he, the river between. That, you know, he wrote Devil on the Cross in Gikuyu. Mm. And I was saying to him that if we don't focus on ch books for children in mother tongue, I mean, why, how would a, a Kenyan child who's never had uh, books in Gikuyu suddenly read a complex text like Devil on the Cross mm. and be interested in it? Mm -hmm. So... He did agree with me, and I hope I can con continue the conversation with him. I think it's a very important conversation. Now, when one reads the story of um, uh, Nelson Mandela in his biography or the story of Walter and, and Albertina Sisulu, it seems to me that uh, these stories, children's stories, played a very important uh, role in their own upbringing. Mandela says so, and I, yes. I believe that uh, uh, the Sisulus also say so. Now, how do we ensure that that kind of experience that they had, that made them who they were, is, is not an opportunity missed by the children of our, of, of our times? By providing them, making them being able to read about these people. I, I went to Dorothy Masuga's funeral yesterday, mm -hmm. and I felt quite sore that there was no uh, biography about Dorothy. And, uh, you know, you get a whole people... In who, indigenous languages? Yes, well, in, in all languages. Okay. Yes. And, it's, it's, and to do that in indigenous languages, you need to invest. You need to invest in the translators, in interpreters, in lexicographers, mm. in all these people that, actually, that that's the infrastructure of language. Mm. And I, I feel that we don't appreciate and value enough our academics that work in African languages, mm. the translators, the interpreters, the people that work in our legislators, in parliament. And I'm happy to see that some of them are among our reviewers. Uh, because they're very passionate. And when you see these people's CVs, they are incredibly qualified and accomplished. Mm -hmm. And um, But I the English professor is always more appreciated than the, and the professor of Isi Zulu. Yes, and I think, you know, we, that's something that we really need to change. And, you know, you have a great translator, um, linguist, like DBZ in Duli. And, you know, these are people that should be fated and, you know, be national figures. And I think we need to do much, much more to uplift 
uh, our own writers, you know, the people that wrote in our languages, and also the different literatures. Make sure as well that the literatures are travel to other languages. Mm. And I think, you know, in India, India is a good example of this. They've done a lot, and they have structures and institutions mm. which support all the work that needs to be done. Mm. So that's why we are excited with the partnership with UNISA, because mm. it's the one as the biggest online yeah. university in the hemisphere, and with all nine languages and the regional outreach. Yeah. I think it can really take children's literature to new levels. Are you hopeful, um, you know, that uh, you are shifting things, uh, that, um, uh, you know, children in this country uh, are, you know, it's possible to, to, to educate them in indigenous languages and to use uh, indigenous languages to tell stories that will, that will make them uh, excited, that will inspire them to take their place in, 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 in the world, as it were. Yes, I do feel that it's possible. And, and why do I feel so? Because you have people like Dinam Klope, you have Cindy Wemagona, Madosini. We have a whole host of very young, very exciting storytellers and poets in indigenous languages. And those are the people that inspire me. And that's it for this edition of Let's have it out. Keep the conversation going on social media using the hashtag LHIO. I am Tiniko Maluleke, and my guest was Messi Sulu. It was such a pleasure talking to you. <laughs>